Okay, so welcome back. Um, this video, we're going to talk about a constant current DC load and try and explain some of the concepts surrounding it. You can get a little bit complicated and see some of the design uh, considerations you need to make and even talk about thermals and that kind of thing. So, um, constant current DC load. What is a constant current DC load? Well, it's basically a way to apply a constant load to a piece of equipment. Now, for example, I've got here, I've got two parts of the circuit. One on the left is a control circuit, and it's, they're separated by this dashed line. So I've got the, the low power, um, low voltage control circuit. And on the right side, I've got the power circuit. And this is the circuit that applies a current to an external device. And for example, I've got here uh, what you might use as a power supply or a battery. And what the circuit would do is would allow you to connect to the terminals of this battery or power supply or whatever device you want to apply a constant current to. Uh, it would allow you to connect this part of the circuit and you could, using the control circuit, you could adjust how much current, constant current, is being drawn through this circuit. And it's basically applying that current to, as a load, a constant load current to this device. So let's first look at some of the basic components here. On the left side, I've got basically three devices. I've got a voltage supply that applies uh, DC, VCC, to this op amp, okay? And that's all it does, is it just applies uh, some value of DC to power this op amp. And I've chosen a value of 30 volts, we're gonna change that, um, but I've just chosen that high value so we don't have to worry about any limitations of the op amp. So basically a, a VCC for the op amp, then I've got another voltage source, which I'm showing as an actual DC voltage, uh, in practice, this would probably be a variable potentiometer uh, voltage divider to apply a variable DC to this uh, non-inverting input of the op amp. And so basically I got these components and you can see I've got an output from the op amp and that goes to this MOSFET. It goes to the gate of the MOSFET and um, there's also a... a um, wire coming back from the power circuit into the inverting input to the um, op amp. And we're using those two inputs to the op amp to drive the gate of this uh, MOSFET, okay? So what I've shown here is a five volt DC source. And the results of this circuit are that with five volts on this input, I will get five volts right here on this source output. So five volts across this one ohm resistor, okay? So five volts in gives me five volts here, and that five volts divided by one ohm gives me five amps. So in this particular situation, if I apply five volts, I should get five amps on this output um, 5 amp load uh, through this power supply or battery and down through the MOSFET and the resistor, okay? And then if I vary this, say I put this down to 3 volts, this op amp will see 3 volts coming in, it will adjust this output and drive the MOSFET to get a 3 volts on this terminal, which is a 3 volts here, okay? So if I get 3 volts going in, um, the mos the um, op amp will adjust the drive of this MOSFET such that it draws current that will give us three volts here and making it um, making the inputs identical. That's the job of the op amp. So three volts in will give me three volts here, driving three amps. So again, the voltage here corresponds to the current flowing this through the circuit. And um, I can adjust this to provide a constant current. Now that current will be constant independent of this voltage on the output. Of course, there are some limitations, but in general, if you design this right, um, you can vary this from 30 volts to 20 volts to 10 volts, and you'll still get 
with five volts in, you'll get five volts here and five amps flowing, okay? So that's the basic um, functionality of this circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some simulations and vary some of these values to get a better understanding for how this thing actually works. Okay, so let's uh, start up a simulation on this and go probing around and see what numbers we get. So simulation will run it. And um, let's zoom in here. And first of all, we said we've got five volts going into this op amp. So we measure it. Yes, we got five volts. Um, now we said that this would uh, generate a voltage out that would try to keep this voltage same as this 5 volts. So let's see what this gate voltage is. Um, let's remove the input. The gate voltage is 11 and a half volts. Okay. So in order to, to um, make these the same, it generated about 11 and a half volts on the gate. So if we know that this uh, voltage across the resistor is 5 volts, let's measure it. Uh, voltage across the source, here we are down here at 5 volts. So we know we got 5 volts, and here we've got 11 and a half. So the difference should be the gate to source voltage, which is um, 11 and a half minus 5, which is about 6 and a half. So let's measure gate to source, and it's this red, which is about, like we said, six and a half volts, okay? So this has generated a voltage um, which amounts to six and a half volts across the gate to source of this MOSFET to turn it on, to drive current, to get five volts at this point. So let's take a look at the spec sheet for this um, MOSFET. This is an IRF, International Rectifier, or Vichy, uh, IRF 510. I just grabbed it out of the box, and I'm using that. So let's take a look at the characteristics for this and see if we can figure out what's going on here. Um, how, does it, how does it know how much to generate uh, to get our 5 amps and that kind of thing? So here is the um, part of the spec sheet. And up here on the top left, you can see what looks like a kind of confusing graph. And it is confusing until you, you understand the basic concept. So on the bottom, we're measuring the drain to source voltage, okay, which is the voltage from here to here, drain to source. And we're also on the y-axis, we've got the drain current, which is the current uh, being drawn off the power supply through the drain to source and down through the resistor. And the third thing we're looking at is we're looking for a we're looking at a curve uh, for each gate to source voltage. Okay, so there's three things going on in this graph. We've got a curve for the gate to source voltage, and here's one for four and a half volts from gate to source. Here's one for five volts, and you can see here the listing of which which curve is which. So it's four and a half, five, five and a half, six, seven, eight, ten, and fifteen gate to source. Okay. So again, it's kind of confusing until you stop and you think, well, wait a minute. For each gate to source voltage, it's kind of defining a fixed current, right? So for example, this four and a half volts gate to source, the characteristic will give a drain current that is kind of flat. And it's about, here's one amp, 10 to the zero is one amp of drain current. So here's um, 0.2, so about 0.25 amps if you put four and a half volts of gate to source voltage, okay? If you crank that up to five volts, you should get about one amp of drain current and so on. So five and a half will give you two amps of drain current. Um, six volts will give you three amps and so on. So if we want five amps, we're looking at, here's one, two, three, four, five. We're looking at about a six and a half or seven volt uh, 
um, gate to source voltage should give us our 5 amps that we want out, okay? So the gate to source of 7 volts should give us a fixed current of about 5 amps. Now again, if, if you are above, see here's a, a drain to source voltage of 1 volt, 2 volts, 3 volts. So it's fixed unless you go down below about 3 volts of drain to source voltage. We're not going to have to worry about that. We're going to be up, um, like I said, here's a 30 volt supply. So we're not going to really have to worry about low voltages across this MOSFET, the drain to source. But you can see this is basically gives you, for different gate to source voltages, a constant current. All right, as long as you're above a certain drain to source voltage. So now it's starting to make a little bit more sense. So we said if I have a gate to source voltage of, we said about six and a half volts, um, that will give us about five amps of current. All right. So four and a half, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, and that's right around five amps of current. So it's starting to make sense now, okay? So um, that's basically how it does it. It will give us a um, gate voltage to ground, this total voltage, of about 11 and a half volts. And we know that if we're going to have 5 amps flowing, we got 5 volts here. So the difference is 6 and a half volts. And it basically just cranks up this gate voltage until it balances to give us 5 amps out, which is 5 volts here, which means 6.5 volts gate to source, okay? So really, it's, it's fairly straightforward, um, but there are some gotchas you need to keep in mind. What I've done here is I have made this um, uh, power supply or battery voltage very high just so we don't run into any limitations, and we're going to talk about those limitations and same thing with this VCC for this op amp. I put it up a very high number. We're going to learn later that we aren't going to want those to be so high. But Okay, so now let's do a little bit different analysis. Let's vary this input voltage, which tells me how much current I want on the output. From 0, it's right now it's at 5. Let's vary it from 0 to 5 and look at some of these values and see how they change. So again, I've got a, a big 30 volt output, a big power supply, and I've got 30 volt. Uh, and that's only to make sure we don't run into any limitations here. So let's go through and do a simulate. And we'll do a DC sweep. And I want V3 to go linearly from 0 to 5 volts. Hit OK, and then run this. And you can see um, we're measuring the gate voltage, and you can see it goes from just under 4 volts, and it goes up to just under 12 volts, like 11 and a half volts, okay? So that's this voltage right here to ground goes from about just under 4 volts up to about 12 volts. And that tells us a couple interesting things. Um, first of all, it says that in order to put uh, up to 12 volts or so on this um, pin here to drive the MOSFET, we're going to need a source voltage that has at least 12 or 15 volts um, to, to drive this out. So um, the, the point is that we may not need, see here we're at 5 volts which means 5 amps uh, coming out on the, the drain to source. And to get that, to apply, we apply gate voltage up to about 12 volts. So we don't need 30 volts here. We should be able to get this to work fine if we have some, something like 12 to 15 volts, okay? So let's take a worst case and put this at 15 volts and rerun it and see if it works. And there you go, and you can see it still gets its um, little over, a little under 12 volts, and um, we've got our, um, everything's working. We got 5 volts, and it's working fine. Uh, we can actually measure this, 
Here's the actual voltage on the, on the um, um, source, which is 5 volts, okay? Now, let's bring this down to, say, 10 volts. So I'll make 10 volts, rerun it, and whoops, it doesn't work, okay? It can't get up to where it needs to be, and what it does is it flattens out um, the voltage across this to about almost just under three volts, which means only three amps flowing. So we know now that we're going to need to have this is about 15 volts. You maybe get by with something less, okay? So we run it again, and there you go. Now you're okay. You're at five volts, which means five amps, and you're fine. So now we've, we've decided the limitations on this. We're going to need something like 12 to 15 volts, okay? Now, on this side, we've got a 30-volt power supply. Now, if you give it some thought, um, if this is going to be delivering 5 amps maximum, when this is at, at 5, um, 30 volts times 5 amps, that's like 150 watts. So, you got to be careful. If you're talking 150 watts and you've got this, this MOSFET, um, that's a lot of power to dissipate. Anything near that is a lot of power. So let's actually measure how much power we're dissipating, and we, we can do Alt, left click, and it will give us a plot of power as the current comes up from 0 to 5 amps. And you can see it starts out at 0, and it goes up to 125 watts across this MOSFET as you increase up to five, 5 amps, okay? So 30 volts is not good, okay? Um, trying to, you can do it. You can try to cool 125 watts, but um, you might want to rethink and maybe say, okay, my limitation is, say, 10 volts, okay? So let's choose 10 volts, run it again, and everything's normal, and it goes up to only 25 watts, okay? This red line shows the increase in power goes up to 25 watts. So now you only have to cool across this MOSFET 25 watts, which is a whole lot easier, okay? So now you're starting to see where, you know, you need to size, you, you put limitations on your VCC and also the um, voltage of whatever you're going to apply it's going to draw your one amp. Now we can also look at do an alt left click on this resistor and look at the um, V source times I, which is uh, this guy is going up to 25 watts also. So you can see it's, um, you know, you can have 25 watts here and 25 watts here, so you got 50 watts to dissipate, all right? So that's the basics of uh, basic concepts behind this um, uh, constant current DC load circuit. Um, maybe in another next video we'll actually put this together on a on a uh, breadboard and actually um, you know attach a um, heat sink and measure some temperatures and see how well it works. So I hope this helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.